Everglades Forever, Restoring America's Great Wetland by Trisha Marks. Essential question. What reasons do people have for protecting the environment? South Florida. In Homestead, Florida, the students in Miss Stone's fifth grade class have been learning about the Everglades, a vast natural wetland located on the southern tip of Florida. Since 2000, the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan has helped to preserve this wetland and its natural water system. Now all of Ms. Stone's students are visiting the Everglades to experience this amazing place and learn what they can do to preserve it. The map on the right shows where Everglades National Park is located in Florida and the areas Ms. Stone's classes explored. On the morning of the field trip, the bus traveled west from Avocado School. The students saw the landscapes change from houses and shopping centers to a flat, grassy prairie that met the horizon miles away. Soon, they arrived at the Royal Palm Visitor Center, part of Everglades National Park. Overlooking Sawgrass on the Nahingan Trail Mrs. Stone had arranged for the class to meet Ranger Jim at the visit center. From there, the ranger led them to the start of the Nahingan Trail, a boardwalk circling into a slope. It was the dry season, which lasts from December through April, so the water levels were low. But there is a deep part of the slope at the beginning of the trail that never dries up. Around the edge of this part, large water birds called an ahinga summed their wings. An ahingas hold out their wings to thermal regulated or regulate their body temperature but soaking up the sun's energy to keep their bodies warm. An osprey, a fish-eating hawk, waited in a tree for a flash of fish in the water. In the distance, a egret stood in the sawgrass, and a flock of endangered woods storks flew overhead. Great blue heron feeding on fish. Right now, you see many animals close together around the deeper water areas, said Ranger Jim. Fish and smaller water animals had migrated to these deep water areas to search for food, wedding birds, alligators, ospreys, and cormorants, large diving birds with bright green eyes followed to feed on the fish and smaller animals. Alligators also use their tails, snouts, and feet to dig deep holes, which fill with water. These holes are places for alligators to cool off while they wait for a meal of the small animals that are attracted to the water-filled holes. During the wet season, which lasts from May through November, water covers much of the land. Then the animals spread out because the water that carries their food is spread out. The Everglades has wet and dry seasons, but it also has wetter and drier areas caused by how high the land is above the water level. Even a few inches of elevation can make a difference in how wet or dry the soil remains throughout the year. These differences in moisture help create unique habitats, each with its own special set of plants and animals. One of the lowest Everglades habitats is the mangrove swamp, which is named for the mangrove trees that line the island and bays leading into the ocean. Fresh rainwater flows toward these areas and mixes with the salty ocean water. 
making the water and the mangrove swamps brackish. The mangrove trees have specially adapted roots and leaves so they can live in this salty, muddy water. The swamps also serve as nurseries for shrimps, bonefish, and other marine animals that need a protected place to grow before they head to the ocean. If the brackish water in mangrove swamps changes, these animals cannot survive. Since two goals of the restoration plan are to allow Everglades water to flow more naturally to the ocean and to regulate the amount of fresh water flowing during the, each season. Animals of the mangrove swamps, including pelicans, sea turtles and the endangered American crocodiles and manatees will be helped to survive. Analyze the text. The main specific vocabulary. What the main specific words does the author use on these two pages? How do these words help deepen your knowledge of the topic? The class was too far from the ocean to see a mangrove swamp, but as they walked the unhinged trail, the students saw several of the Everglades habitats. The slough filled with slow-moving water stretched in the distance. A sawgrass prairie covered the shallow parts of the slough, and in the distance, the round domes of hardwood hammocks rose above the surface of the water. As the students came to the end of the Unhingham Trail, Ranger Jim pointed out a gumbo limbo tree. It's also called a tourist tree, he said, because the bark of the tree peels off, just like the skin of the sunburned tourist. Then he directed the students back to the bus for a short ride to a pine forest called Pine Lands. Ranger Jim took the class on a hike through the Pine Lands, one of the driest habitats in Everglades. The sunlight filtered through the trees, everything was quieter than on the Nanhingan Trail. The floor of the Pine Lands is covered with cabbage palms mulberry bushes, blue powdered flowers, and other vegetation that help absorb sounds from the outside world. This is where you find solution holes, Mrs. Stone told the students. They searched the forest for the large holes that have been carved out of the limestones by thermic acid, a chemical form when Rainwater mixes with the pine needles and other leaves in the forest. Small animals live, feed, and raise their young in the solution bowls. The students also watch it as a tiny yellow tree snail nestled under the bark of a tree, eating a growth on the tree called lichen. They saw a red shoulder head hawk swirl in the sky and they waited for a golden orb spider to catch its next meal in its web close to the ground. Perhaps even in this last hour, the vast, magnificent, subtle and unique region of Everglades may not be utterly lost. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. As they walked through the Pinelands, the students talked with Mrs. Stone and Ranger Jim about the circle of life. The Mikasuki believed that all plant and animal and human life is connected. They had seen this today in the habitats they visited. The students also realized how terrible it would be if the habitats in this part of Everglades were not protected from the effects of farming and development that were still putting the Everglades in danger. What would happen to all the unique plants and animals they had seen? 
Ranger Jim said they could help by conserving water, even when brushing their teeth or washing their faces, because most of the water used in southern Florida comes from the Everglades. With responsible water conservation, the Everglades restoration plan could, over the next 30 years, restore a healthy balance so all living things, plants, animals and people will be able to live side by side in the only Panheoki grassy river in the world. It was the end of a long day for the class, but there was one more part of Everglades to visit. Mrs. Dunn and Ranger Jim led the students into an open space hidden at the end of the hiking trail. This is a finger glade, Mrs. Dunn said. It is a small part of a saw grass prairie that does not stay wet all year. During the wet season, the finger glade would be filled with the water and fish. But now the ground, which is higher than the large sawgrass prairies, was dry and hard. For a few minutes, you can walk as far as you like and enjoy the finger glade, said Mrs. Dunn. The students fanned out some pretended they were birds flying low overhead. Others studied the sawgrass pretend to be explored discovering the glade. Still others talked about how the hard ground on which they were walking would turn into a lake deep enough for fish to swim through during the wet season. And some just lay on their backs looking at the sky and the ring of trees around the glade. When the students came back, they sat in a circle close to Mrs. Tan. Close your eyes, said Mrs. Tan, and listen. Do you hear cars? She whispered. Do you hear sirens? Do you hear people? What do you hear? Silence. You are not going to find silence like this any place else in the world, Mrs. Tom said quietly. This glade is protected by a circle of trees and marshes and natural wildlife. It is far from the noise of the outside world. It is full of silence. Any time you are in sawgrass prairie, like this one, stop and listen to the silence. Analyze the text. Explain scientific ideas. Why do you think the author includes the descriptions of the finger glade? What has it helped you understand about the sawgrass prairies of the Everglades? How does this area compare to the mangrove swamp and pinelands habitats? The sun was setting over the Everglades as the class walked back to the bus. Birds flew low over the sawgrass prairie. It was a peaceful time, a time for everything to settle down for the night. The students knew that for the near future, the Everglades would look the same, and might even be almost the same. They also knew about the dangers facing the Everglades, and that it would not stay the same unless people watched over it and took care of it. Restoring the Everglades will take a long time, and it may never be finished, but the students knew they could play a part as they grew older. They had learned that they too were a part of the Everglades, connected in the same circle of life, with the tiniest insect and largest alligator. They knew that someday, in the not too distant future, responsibility for the Everglades would pass on to them. They would become the guardians and protectors of the only Everglades in the world, helping this wild and wonderful place to go on forever. 
Analyze the text, author's purpose. Why might the author have written about a class field trip to the Everglades? Why do you think she would include so many vivid details about the wetlands?